In the darkest corners of the universe, a hero emerges from the sky with a heart so pure and a face so strange. He's here now to save our lives. With grace and wisdom, he brings us home. His presence lights up. Tonight. No, people. No, this is not Christian rock. <laughs> this is uh, music generated from a website called Suno.ai. And uh, I was just writing a song about a zip bug, a very nice, inspirational zip bug. And so that's, that's what was playing. Is it still playing? Yep. Now, of course, it's not really my type of music, but the whole point is this is damn good for artificially generated shit. Yeah, sounds like Christian rock. <laughs> so, so this is this is why we were late, um, <clears throat> because Faz bumped into that. Right as we were about to jump on, we were both on time for once. And then we started playing with that thing, and, and boy, is that neat. And they're cheap, at least to get started. Yeah. Not in well, uh, kind of too much, but... I made an EDM version of a Zip Bug song. Well, you didn't upload it, so... I, I didn't was... upload it. Uh, I literally generated those like in just a couple minutes, just throwing some some stuff down. You can even use chat GPT for some lyrics. Actually, it's kind of interesting because this says when you make this song, you need to uh, assert that this is your lyrics or lyrics generated by AI that you own. And if you generate something from chat GPT, you do own it. Just so you know, it's in their terms and conditions. But that's interesting. You can generate music with with your own lyrics, just like that. Yeah, it's, it's like instant. Yeah, that was instant. that was kind of freaky. That was, and you can you can put your own lyrics in there, and it'll it'll pick somebody to do it too. Any any lyrics you want. So let's see. Do I have something here? Well, I can't play music when I share my screen, but I can just share it. Let's see. It's the snow. There we go. Let's sit right here. And uh, yeah, these are, you can, uh, song descriptive, a syncopated grunge song about a cozy, cozy rainy day. Let's see, you could do custom, you could enter your own lyrics, you can make it instrumental if you want. Um, enter your style of music, uh, techno. Um, I need some lyrics. Can, can somebody type something in the chat? We can we can make for lyrics. If you do, I'll generate a song, I'll upload it to here, and then we'll play it on the cast. So uh, <laughs> you guys can do that. Uh, make it about make it make genre. it about make, make it make it about boogers, peepees, and butts. Okay, boogers, <laughs> peepees, and butts. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Come on, we need some more lyrics. Come on, people. There we go. So well, let's let's just go ahead and talk, and I'll put this together while we're talking. Generate the music. You, yeah, you put a whole bunch of things. stuff in there. We, we need some so, stuff. I'll, I'll I have GPT been come up with stuff since you guys. Are... No, no, let let them let them go. Give them a minute. Cripes, they're they're like thirty seconds behind. First of all, so <laughs> so um. I've been teasing since what Thanksgiving that we were going to do a show on some other uh, ways to get into the crypto verse besides ETH, right? Because ETH is kind of a pain in the ass. We have um, crypto view. Who's the XRP expert, but we haven't nailed him down to come on and show us the XRPL yet. So tonight I figured we would go through, I've been playing, uh, on both Solana and on Avalanche. And 
I want to show you guys how to work that, how to the basics. I'm not going to go really, really super deep into this, but I want to go into the basics of how to get <clears throat> your ETH put onto those. And that way you can go and the, the fees are ridiculously low on both of those platforms. Um, and then down the road, hopefully not too far down the road, but I want to do a piece on Stellar Term and XRPL as well. But tonight we're going to do those two. Now, this is the rage, right? And I was on Twitter this morning and there was there's a guy who has like this ginormous... Uh, telegram that talks about the Solana trading. And he was given just spitting out some random facts from the past year that he's learned while running this, this um, board. <clears throat> and apparently there's a lot more Solana traders than anyone ever realized, right? It's really, really popular. You can not only trade directly in the phantom wallet, but you can also, there's there's Jupiter, which we'll go through also. And it looks exactly <clears throat> like Uniswap, but it's for Solana. And uh, it it is like the rage. So we're actually, I'm, I got my wallets. I got uh, some side wallets hooked up here and we'll go through and actually do these transactions. Um, we'll have to, you can talk about your uh, your bugs maybe while we, while the core on Avalanche works, because that takes about 10 minutes um, to get it over there. So um, while you're fiddling, I'm going to jump right in and let's talk a little about, we'll start with Solana, right? And I put links, I already did it because I'm terrible at, at going back and doing it. I put links for <clears throat> everything that we talk about here tonight is already in the show notes, right? So you can go there. And for the love of everything that is holy, please do not Google search this stuff. You'll get fake sites. You'll get fake seed, seed keys. It'll take it and you'll get drained. Please verify it. Save it to your bookmarks so you know where you're going and get it done right. Security, 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 people, right? Okay. All right. Grandpa, dad. Hey. I'm, I'm you you know you know these people listen to us they take us seriously and if they go and they get scammed they're going to get pissed at us i'm just trying to to remind people because it's a different universe than eth and metamask right it's it's kind of the same but it's different software it works a little bit differently looks a little differently so just be safe for all that is all that is crypto all right, so let me share my screen if I can figure out where the button is. I have to have my glasses on. Ooh, do, 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 share screen. Which one do we want to go with first? We're going to go with Phantom first. <clears throat> okay, we're at phantom.app. <coughs> this oh. one is your Solana wallet. It will work on, uh, on others as well. It's sort of a... a mini version of metamask but i've had phantom for probably two years now and it <clears> works <throat> it works terrifically so uh where am i let me look at it would you just look at it there we go okay and so you can also get the browser extension i'm a brave fan i use brave as the browser i always have on all my devices i love this this browser very secure, very private. So you get that loaded. Uh-oh, I don't know if I know my password. Oh, shit. Hang on. Aha! There we go. Got a little network congestion. So I've got a little Solana. I've got a little Star Atlas in this wallet. And... uh Somebody sent me, it looks like some kind of shit coin at some point. I know I didn't buy that. But it works a lot like uh, MetaMask, right? And it will connect to Ethereum and to Polygon as well. So it's very similar in nature, all right? So you have your wallet, everything is loaded. And then what we want to be able to do with this, though, 
is do uh, do some trading, right? So we flip over to Jupiter Swap. So there's <clears throat> two or three DEXs out there. <clears throat> this one seems to be the the best of the best. And a lot of people work here, and it works exactly the same way that Uniswap works. So let's connect. We connect our wallet. Count one. Connect. Now we're connected. You'll see that down here, I, I need one of those growing things for my mouse. <clears throat> so they, you can place limit orders. You can DCA, set and forget it. But here's the important thing. They have a bridge here as well. All right. So you can bridge if you have, if you have, you can connect uh, any wallet to this. So if you want to take your ETH from MetaMask and move it over, this is the place you do it. And it's from and to, same as you make any other crypto transfer, right? From the Ethereum chain, which we have here, and they support a ton so, of chains. I'm not sure if we can see what you're talking about here. You need Why? to share a different screen. Do I? Well, I just oh. see that this main, your trusted oh. companion. You yeah. know what? Yes, I'm an idiot. I forgot to, I forgot I to switch screens. Nice In the meantime, there. while you're switching screens. Singing songs about the things that we don't mention at the feast. Boogers, peepees, and but so my The land of the silly under the cotton candy sky. Laughing, we play in the most ridiculous way. Boogers, pee pees, and butts—they say make the gloomiest day bright and gay. With the that right. sounds like a '70s guy. <laughs> All right, so get back to your. I your, see your fire and oh, I see rain. There's the there's the oh. uh, there's the the lyrics for that. I forgot. I oh had, wait, here's mine. Whoops, whoops. Stop. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. Hang on. Whoops. I'm going to remove I mine. I don't know what I'm doing. And apparently, you don't know what you're doing. There you go. There we go. All right. Here we go. Let's try this again. This is like we're having another disaster Friday here. All right. Please, so sir. this is this is Jupiter, as you can see in the top left. I've connected my wallet in the top right. You can see the little blinky thing I'm doing with my mouse. Is this a website? Connect your wallet. Yeah, this is a website. I have the link in the uh, in the description of the show. Whoa. It's jupe.ag. And uh, it looks exactly like <clears throat> Uniswap, right? And I'm, I'm focusing right up here at the top where the bridge is, right? So you can connect any wallet. I'm getting back to where I was when you kindly notified me. You can connect any wallet and do the bridge to Solana, right? You can bridge from Ethereum, Optimism, BNB, Base, Arbitrum, Avalanche, Tron, anything. And you select which token in your wallet that you want, and you take it to Solana, and you can choose whatever you want to dump it into, right? And then you use it, right? So it, as you can see right here, it's very, very cheap. Very, very cheap to, to do your bridge. And it'll take you and put everything into your Solana wallet that you have listed right up here. You can get your swap history, see what tokens you have available in there. This is the Phantom Wallet, so this is already on Solana, so I'm not going to demonstrate, but this is the bridge that you would use to get it over. You can do DCA here, right, which which is something that's new. I, I have not tried this one. But you can say, I want to allocate, you know, $5 of USDC to buy Sol on whatever time frame, every minute, every second, every month, every day, every hour. Now, remember, with Bitcoin, I do this with Strike Wallet. Every hour I buy Bitcoin, I dump a bunch of money into the wallet, and then every hour it buys Bitcoin like clockwork. And it's, it's freaking fantastic. That's the best way to dollar cost average in. So you can do that here as well. Limit orders, this is huge, right? So if you're not a trader already, 
what this means is you can take and you can put your put what trade you want to make and you can specify the price and specify the expiration and say boy you know i really want to buy the uh the the booger butts and pee pee coin but i don't want to pay you know 0 0.05 cents i want to pay 0 0.03 per and you can set this and when it hits 0 0.03 if it ever hits 0.03 it'll automatically buy it whether you're logged into this or not and that's like that's like huge right so you can do the same for the set. if you want to wait for a spike but don't feel like sitting here watching it forever just set the limit order and it'll automatically execute when it gets to the price that you select. We can do a deeper dive on this um, on another show. Okay, but I, so we want to get through a lot here today. Okay, question about taxes at the end of the year. Where can you get records of everything that you've done? That's the beauty of blockchain, <clears> the <throat> Solana Explorer. You can pull your records. You can also use, uh, and I can't click it because I'll have to change screens, but I use CoinStats. If you load your information and your wallets into CoinStats, I think it's 100 bucks a year is what I pay for that. And you load your wallets in, and you can get a detailed report. You can see it all. You can download it. You can transform it into text. You can, do, you can even upload it into tax software. Um, and they partner, I think, with one of the tax companies, but I don't use the one that they, they partner with. But it's very, very easy to get those transactions and transaction history. So your do other blockchains besides Solana have this kind of stuff other than Ethereum, of course? Well, yeah, most of the most of the large ones do. There's some of the smaller ones that don't have a, a full ecosystem yet with really, really good block explorers. So you have to be careful where you're trading. And obviously, uh, you want to be careful of the platform because you don't know where a lot of these these platforms have come from, right? You don't know if it's a giant rug waiting to happen. So if you've never heard of a network, do your research before you jump onto a platform, connect your wallet and start trading. Another good security tip is when you're done doing your trading and you know, hey, I set this and forget it. If it executes, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You can go into your wallet and you can revoke the privileges, right? So through your wallet, you can go into your settings. You can manage your accounts, your security and privacy. You can get your connected apps, right? So today we connected here. Okay, you can go in here and you can disconnect it if you'd like. And that's a good security practice if you're not going to be somewhere often because if something goes sideways on this Jupiter platform, and you're not connected, the odds of you being exploited are very, very, very low, if non-existent. So, so what do you think about Solana? Um, <clears throat> I, 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 ooh, that's, that's a tough question because I think the platform, it's very, very centralized, right? It's owned <clears throat> by a company, which is not very good. However, if you're just trading... It's a much cheaper alternative than ETH, right? Extraordinarily cheap. There are a lot of legitimate platforms and programs and projects on the Solana blockchain. Star Atlas is one, right? So you just have to be careful where you're going. Do your research and look up where these, what the reviews are on the on the trading that people have done here. Jupiter comes highly recommended. Um, so I've played around with this a little bit, and let's let's just have a little fun. Let's execute a trade. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay with Solana, and we're going to buy some more of the... Uh, what's a good one here? Otherwise, I have to be boring and uh, <clears throat> just get some more of the... Star Atlas. Okay, let's get some more Star Atlas. Okay, so let's do... Let's do half. No, that's too much. Let's do 0. 0.4. 70 bucks. $70 more. 
Okay, it's three hops, meaning it's going to go through three different architectures in order to get there. You can click, it'll tell you it's going to go to Orca, switch it, put it into Atlas, and drop it in your wallet. Swap, pending approval. Network congestion. Watch this thing fail. Okay, network fee, 0 0.0036. That's like pennies. Okay, so let's see. Processing transaction. Slippage reached. <laughs> we got to mess with slippage. Do you know what slippage is? I do. Let's go up. Uh, transaction may fail. Let's go with one. What it what would you what's the best way you would you would call slippage? The easiest way to explain it to someone who doesn't know what it is. Huh. Um so when you arrange well, I'm thinking of slippage in, in view of staking. Um but so slippage about... in in trading is you may not be able to execute at the exact same price that you're expecting here. It'll it'll give you things like minimum or you'll see things like minimum or, or maximum guaranteed, right? So there we go. I swapped 0.04 soul for 10,000 Atlas and the fee was like ridiculously low. So let's go and... Let's <clears throat> let me pull that up. Solana price. So the price of Solana today is one hundred and seventy five dollars and seventy three cents. So one seventy five times point zero zero three. That trade cost me fifty two cents. Fifty two cents and I bought. We can go into our wallet and we immediately see everything is a little bit different. My 1.19 soul now, and I have a little bit more Star Atlas. Limit orders work the same way. So as an example, you're selling, so I don't want to sell soul, but you would say, okay, we want to sell one soul. <clears throat> All right. And we're buying Atlas. So we're going to do that. We would set the price once we go in, all right? Or you can flip-flop it. We can sell Atlas at this price. This is where you put your price in. Expires. You can set it to expire. Say you only, I want, I want this if the price hits this in the next hour, in the next day, in the next three days. You got to trade a minimum of at least five dollars. So, so slippage would be say if you you wanted a thousand dollars of this stuff and the price hits a certain price, it's going to start executing. But then the price might start moving while that's going on, right? Yeah, and there's fees associated with those hops that we talked about, and those are a little bit dynamic as well. So your slippage, think of it generally as mm. just an approximation. And if you're on uh, Binance, the Binance chain (BSC). And you, uh, what's the name of their their decks over there? Oh, uh, uh, it has that token, the cake token. Um, anyway, it will tell you right it, as you're making your confirmation, the, the minimum guarantee that you'll receive is this. You might get more because that's the price you're asking, but the minimum that you'll get is this. And some of the things like in Uniswap, uh, sometimes you'll get that if if fees are like all over the place and it's really highly volatile, you'll see that as well. You get a minimum of, so it'll tell you, hey, one percent up on Atlas. I should probably sell that back, right? Bunch of shitcoin trading going on. So, so how do you keep track so, of your taxes when you do all that trading? You don't have to. Like that. You don't have oh. to. That's what blockchain is for. No, no, no. You no, download no, no, it at the no. end of the year. Oh my God. No. Um, what I'm saying is, <laughs> okay, so fine. You put a hundred dollars into this, you make $110, you sell it, you then, uh, you owe taxes on that. And then you're going to, you're going to put it into something else. You're going to make, I don't know, 20 more dollars on that. You sell it. 
and, and back and forth and back and forth. Eventually, each one of those transactions, that shit adds up. So how do you tell how much money you owe? I mean, if you, you wind up with like $50 million, how, you're, you're going to have, have all these little bits of taxes added in to every gain that you make. How do you keep track of those taxes? I don't. I'm not obsessive compulsive like you are. So, so okay. At so the, at the end, at of, the the end year, of the year, you find out that you owe six thousand dollars in taxes, and you're like, "Holy shit, where'd this come from?" Just who cares? Saying. I made, I probably made twenty thousand in profits. If I have to pay six grand in taxes, I'm still up fifteen thousand dollars. Who cares? Okay, so if you you bought that new car with your twenty thousand dollars that you made, and at the end of the year you owe like six thousand dollars or something, where are you going to get that? You going to sell your car to get that money? How are you going to do that? I, I'm. <laughs> Well, that's what okay, I'm, that's you can, what I'm asking you about. can you can plan for taxes. Most of us normal people who who aren't OCD about taxes, we figure it out when it comes. Okay, we have no. So here's what you do. Okay, you get you get in a, a an account. Uh, sorry, a, a crypto like manager like Coinly, Coinly.io, and you keep track of your transactions. You point it to your wallets, and Coinly will tell you as you make these transactions what your taxes, it, it, sorry, what your, what your gains will be as you're making them. That way you can have a tool to keep track of that. So people who don't want to uh, fuck themselves over can keep track of their taxes during the year. And of course, if you don't do your taxes, don't worry about it. But for those of you that do, you know, I, I see 15 people on there. So the 12 people on, on here that do, um, you can keep track of your taxes by using Coinly to watch those wallets that you make all these trades with. That's my two cents. Continue with your irresponsible trading discussion, sir. It's not irresponsible trading. Look, so you're going to have to pay the tax one way or another, right? Set it aside now. Do whatever you want with it. But that's, ultimately, that's yeah, you got to file your taxes. Okay. So demology, soul is overhyped. Really fast and cheap, but to send something to blockchain is like ten to fifteen, five to ten tries when there's high traffic. Right. Um, there are better chains like near near. I've heard a lot about that, but I have not experienced that yet. Demology, if you want to come on and walk us through the near blockchain let's, and, let's see the and tools. some of the things at some what, point. What's interesting to me about sure. what you're doing right now is you have tools that you're showing, online tools where you're doing trading and you're 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 mm -hmm. getting making stuff happen. If these other chains have them. Let's see them. So if you say there's better other chains, but it, there's this arcane method of using it, no, it's not a better chain. That's just my two cents. Yeah, so we would love to to highlight these other chains. And like I said, Demology, you're welcome to come on and walk us through that. We all learned. We had, um, who who did we have on that time that walked us through WAX? Oh, my God. That was such a long time ago. Yeah, it was, two, yeah, it was like ago. over a year ago. Yeah, uh, well over no, more a year than that. ago. It was, uh, I don't know. I have a zip bug on wax. <laughs> Just one, I think. <laughs> right. Um, all right. So let's pump into our next one. A, a quick. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, we got, we'll have a little commercial in between here. I'm going to, I'm going to play a new song that I generated uh, while we were all waiting. So this one's called big bad giant. And I don't know if you like thrash music or not, but this is uh, uh, here's the lyrics right here. This is from a zip bug of mine named Twum here and uh this is the kind of music he listens to awesome I think I'm going to put this in an NFT. Wow. All right. There you go. <laughs> All right. It's, it's, it looks like that. I mean, this is, this is literally us playing with this for the very Just first time. around. Faz found this like literally five minutes before we were supposed to go out tonight. So this so. is, this is kind of cool. So you can generate um, all sorts of different types of music with lyrics, uh, you know, different lyrics. Anyway, get all right. Let me, boring yeah, talk. let me pop my boring talk. So, all right, people, people were asking before when we were going to do these things. Let me get rid of, let me get rid of this. We're going to remove <clears> that. I got to share another screen. 
So how do we do this? Stop screen. Now we're going to talk. Oh, I can close that one too because I'm going to get confused. I have like a million tabs open here. All right. So we are now going to talk a little about Avalanche or AVAX, right? And AVAX, I've been on this one for quite a while. And it this it's it's a fantastic chain. It's a fantastic trading experience. But at the same time, it's nerve wracking. I've been doing this for what, four years now? And I still freak out when I have to do this bridge because it takes freaking forever. So uh, let me share this screen. Present share screen. Avalanche and share. All right. Let's take a peeky peek. Add to stage. There we go. Is that right? Tools, bridge. Yes, we are on core. So this is core, okay? <clears throat> and it is from Avalanche themselves. They've built a core app, and they even tell you up top what I was screaming about earlier. Make sure the URL is correct, core.app, <clears throat> okay? Not core.com, not corebridge.com, not corebridge.app. It's core.app bridge. Okay. And so it looks complicated, but it's really not. Right. And they have, they give away tokens. They'll pay for your gas bridge more than 75 of any token and avalanche to receive an AVAX airdrop. Those are always fun. You'll get um, AVAX airdropped in for using the bridge. So we have to connect our wallet. Let me shut off my phantom wallet. Otherwise we'll get some errors here. All right. So if we connect our wallet, you go up to the top right to connect your wallet. We're going to connect MetaMask. And I'm already connected because I switched earlier to the account that I want to use for this example here tonight. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take tokens from Ethereum that you see here. We're going from Ethereum to Avalanche. I can wiggle it and make it bigger. That's what she said. So I'm going to take a token out of my wallet. I got some ETH in here. So I'm going to select ETH. And I'm going to do 0 0.025, which is like 80 bucks. Okay. And it says I'm going to receive that much ETH or wrapped ETH. And the dot E there means it's on the avalanche chain and we'll get there i'll show you what that looks like in metamask once we get that far first we have to get it there though so we we're sure we're going from eth to avalanche we're taking 80 bucks and we're going to throw it over there we hit bridge tokens and we approve it in our metamask wallet if can you see that yeah confirm and here we go. Now, this is this is the nerve-wracking part, right? Because it take it used to take even longer. Oh my god, it takes like forever. It would take like three, four, five hours. And you were on like pins and needles. Buck 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you can see here, it has to go through 96 validations. And you got a little timer right here. And it'll tell you when it's done. Then once it gets to Avalanche, it goes through another confirmation process. So what I tend to do is I'll take, you know, 500,000 bucks, 2,000 bucks, whatever, and I'll throw it into this bridge on a Saturday afternoon. And by Saturday night, I just log in over on the Avalanche side and it's already there. I don't worry about it so much anymore. We've already gone through. We're working on number four. It does go faster as time goes on. But we'll have a few minutes while that goes, right? And so uh, in the meantime, in order to, to go there, you have to add in the network. You can see MetaMask on here, right, Faz? In my window? Does that pop up? You're muted, I think. I was muted, I think. Can you can you see my uh, my MetaMask? No. 
No, that's a separate yeah. window, which is oh, probably good. Way. You don't want people seeing your MetaMask. Yeah, but still. Um, you have to set up, and we did a show on this a while back. It's probably too far too far gone. We'll have to make some more tutorials. But you you simply add the Avalanche network to it, and then you switch over to the Avalanche network in your MetaMask, and it will bring up your tokens on that on that bridge. Okay, so that's going. While we're waiting for that to finish and, and for me to go into Trader Joe, we got about 10 minutes. Uh, is there something you wanted to talk about while we were waiting, Mr. Faz? Yeah, there's something I could talk about. Um, speaking of the Avalanche blockchain um, and zip bugs, because I like to talk about my zip bugs. Is um, I made some zip bugs for the Avalanche blockchain, so I'll uh, I'll flip that open right now. These are called Zip Bugs 2024 AVAX. Uh, so OpenSea actually will allow you to do Avalanche NFTs now. And if we click on one of these, you should see the Avalanche logo right up here. And what's that say? Chain Avalanche. Actually, I believe this is Avalanche C, which is a, a wrapped AVAX. I'm not sure how they're wrapping it or where they're putting it, but they're they're on the Avalanche blockchain, so they can move back and forth, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I'm playing with AI, generating some bugs. These all come from drawings of mine. I have some, uh, some stories. Each one of these guys have stories. And uh, all, the, all these first ones are, are one AVAX. But the, the whole point is, I haven't seen a lot of AVAX NFTs, and I have a lot of cool ones that I like a lot, like uh, this one's really cool. Uh, and I want to get some stuff out there. So yeah, uh, you can put you can make NFTs on Avalanche now, and these NFTs will work on OpenSea. I have some stories. I have some 8-bit guys here. Here's an 8-bit one right here. There you go. Of course, I have I have some good stories here. I don't think he's for sale yet. All right, that's that's my little my little interlude on your your AVAX talk. There, you're gonna move on to another chain now. Uh, you're you're muted, sir. Yes, I am. I I wanted you to have completely the floor there. So we're bridging. We're up to twenty. I've already got some stuff in my wallet, so I have to. Uh, get rid of that, and yep. now I have to go and share another window. And Trader Joe is what we're going to look at next. So for those of you who may struggle a little bit, maybe this is your first time learning about these other networks. If that's you or you have questions, you can hit us up at CFA, and we'll be happy to walk you through how to do that stuff. We can even jump on a StreamYard call fast. together. Academy. That'd be Crypto Faz Academy, which is on the Discord. When, when you say these things, you gotta you gotta let them know where what what the hell CFA is. It's not like we're popular or anything. We're very popular. Zorro knows it. He's our number one and number two fan. Oh, we have some comments here. Okay. So yeah. uh, you gonna share your screen, sir, and show? I'm us trying. You you distracted me there for a oh. minute. Where am I at? Trader Joe. There we go. Okay, so Trader Joe is a fantastic oops we both hit the button is a fantastic interface as well this do you remember when it first came out who was telling us about buying that joe token oh who introduced us to that oh my god uh, that was like three years ago and everybody's like yeah there you don't need any of this stuff you've got uniswap eth is the best rah 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 you yeah, know and the joe token i think i have some somewhere yeah, it's it's doing okay. It's it's not uh it's not not point I don't think anymore. It's not not but, point. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah, it, we're it crashed pretty hard. <laughs> we um we're going to do the same thing as we do on Uniswap and the same thing that we do uh over on our other protocol is we're going to connect our wallet. So we'll connect our wallet, connect MetaMask, and it will connect. 
approve, approve. And we are now in. So it'll have your wallet address up here. It'll have the network that you're on. And again, you can go from different network to different network. You have up in the top left, you can trade. There's staking pools. I don't know what rush is. I've never used that. What's that? I wonder. Let's click it. Meme coin rush. Stake in the meme coins and you can you can earn stuff. Look at this. There's 59 million in COQ. 59 million dollars staked in COQ. That's crazy. No chill. Kimbo. Tech. Look at all these. This is like ridiculous. Well, I bought a lot so, of Joe, actually. I bought like a thousand Joe, but it says oh, yeah? I sent it somewhere. This is back in March of 2022. I don't know where I sent it, but I had a thousand Joe. Wow. Hopefully it was the a wallet of mine. Pool. Look at this. The staking pool. They have the pool names listed and everything. There's 42 what side million. Is this? this is Trader Joe. Okay. This is the Avalanche version of uniswap so we're on we're on trade the trade thing and what we have is we have our balance in this wallet i've got <clears throat> seven avax and you can do a simple trade you can also place an order or you can swap immediately it's like kind of like a limit order right so we're gonna we're gonna take uh We'll do one AVAX and we're going to go into bull and one AVAX will buy me 14,842 bull. That's playable games that, that we've, we've talked to playable on here several times. We got to get them back on here. Yeah, we do. We, we got to do a check in we, on them. Yes. He promised us end of the year. And then I think we all got busy and forgot. Um, <clears throat> I don't mind buying bull. They're, they're down right now quite a bit. So you go in here, and we're going to hit swap. We have our confirmation pops up. My trade fee is $0.14. Cents. I'm going to click confirm. It says it's swapping up here, and you can validate the on Snowtrace. Snowtrace was supposed to be going away. I wonder if they went away. Let's look at it. Snowtrace is still there. Yeah, that's it's still what's used here. by by OpenSea. Yeah, well, there was notices all over the place at the end of the year that they were supposed to be going under because they couldn't raise enough money for the development. So it's already swapped. It's already in my wallet, and it costs fourteen cents. And I I own ten thousand more bull tokens. How much are they worth? Nothing. The bull token. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're they're doing really well. I've I've done extraordinarily well in bull. Let's look at it. Better than you did with Gala. Yes. Really? Yes. So Joe I've, is a Avax token. My okay. yes, my my um my profits. Let's see if it'll take me there. No, it won't. So let's go. From here, let's go to coin market cap. 3 ull -L. My uh my total profits are far more on bull than I earned in three years at Gala, and I did very well at Gala. Um <clears throat> now, right today, I'm not looking so good because it took a took a massive shit the last couple of days here, as you can see by the chart. Well, why is but that? Because all the other tokens have gone up. What'd you do wrong? No, they sir? have not. My portfolio is down significantly. Let's look at a year. Here's the year. Here's where we all started buying bull right in here. And it got up to one cent there. And it was up to 1.1 cent in December of 23. And now it's, it's kind of on its way down. We had with bull... We had them uh, release that first game, which gave them their pump there. Uh, I have not followed Bull super closely lately, so I don't know why this is going. But they do all kinds of fun stuff over at, at Bull. I enjoy their platform. They have parties? What? They, well, about? sort of. They have, they have a lottery 
that you you buy lottery tickets and they they give tokens away if you win the lottery. Uh, they have a very active Discord. They have contests. They have all kinds of fun engagement while while people are building. So they're down. Yeah, they're down a little bit right now. But uh, I'm very happy with it overall. And here's your addresses over here. We should do, we should probably do an updated MetaMask one as well too, because MetaMask has changed, and I want to talk about Rabby Wallet. I've been playing a lot with Rabby Wallet. And it is like MetaMask on steroids. You don't have to manually change networks. It automatically does it for you. It's it's fantastic. So these trading tools, I've been getting a lot more into trading lately. I've been doing a lot of trading, especially on Stellar Term and uh, on both Avalanche. You want to show uh, them Stellar Term? Uh, not tonight. We're We're already running about 45 minutes here. And I know you wanted to talk a little more about Sora. Um, I, I, and then, I, don't, I don't have uh, anything on Sora today. Uh, I want to generate oh. some stuff with Sora first before I talk about that. Sora right okay. now seems to be, so Sora is an animation uh, tool, which an AI animation tool. Um, and it's only, what, last I heard, it's only uh, open to certain people right now. So um, I don't know if they've opened that up yet. Let me look right here. Log in. Okay, how do you log in? Can you make an account? Well, Sora is part of OpenAI. Okay, last I heard, Sora was. Um, I already not open made an account on there. When we were horsing around before the show, I made an account. It took me three seconds. On Sora? Yeah. Pricing. How much does Sora cost? <laughs> oh, this is neat. They have like. Um, their intro video is like all these paper airplanes flying through the forest. I got to show that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's cool. So, oh, I'm not... no, I don't, I, I don't have one there. No, I am, I am a hundred percent Claude. I don't even, I don't mess oh, with okay. anybody else. Well, we'll talk about Claude in a minute. Um, I don't like the idea of creating things from text, and the only reason I'm interested in the music thing, creating that from text, is just because it's new and I haven't seen it before, but. Um, I don't feel like it's any part mine if if I'm just having something just create something according to my text. I like to salt it with with my own stuff, like my zip bugs. Everything that that I've showed you came from a drawing of mine or a digital creation of mine that it's that used as a base. Um, in that sense, it's not like something that somebody else can come up with. It's got echoes of of what I do in there. So I would hope that if I make video from text that or, or songs. I'd love to be able to just uh, salt it with some chords, salt it with some images and say, hey, see this, this zip bug here, make him fly around. That to me is practical. But if I just say, hey, just make a bunch of pa paper airplanes going through the forest. Yeah, that's that would be my that'd be an idea. But it's still like you don't know what it's going to look like. I mean, it's like you just hiring a team to do something for you, I guess. Didn't I, I mean, send you that. I sent you the video one a while back. What the hell was that called? Did you ever use it? No, it, I didn't I, use it. It was, it was expensive, but holy cow, did it generate some neat, neat stuff? I wonder if I still have that link. But um, let me see. So that's, I think that's the second step. The first step is just get the videos made. The second step is okay. Now you can salt it with some video of your own or some pictures of your own. You can maybe have a picture of George Washington and say, hey, make him walk and talk kind of thing. Uh, or if you have a music, I'd love to be able to play like three or four chords from a, uh, a guitar. That's, that's what I can do. Uh, play, play a few chords from a guitar saying, hey, this is a nice riff. Can you like make this song? Or, you know, I could even come up with a song and I could say, can you play it in there whatever it genre? Can you play it in another genre? You know, which I couldn't do. I mean, I could write a song, but it's it's not like I could I could be well practiced at it, have it done in, in a specific, you know, bluesy way or, or a heavy metal way or something like that. Uh, that's what I want these tools to do is to enhance what I'm doing. I don't want to just create shit of its own without my input because then it just doesn't feel like it's mine. Yeah, so it's called video.ai. Hang on, let me post the link. 
Uh, I'll put it in private so you can get it. There's the private one. And then let me post pricing. it. Oh, pricing. Contact sales. Okay. Yeah. You that's have to really ask. Expensive. Okay. What do we got here? Okay. So if and... you're going to use Stora, they charge you, you pay $10 for a million tokens. <laughs> um, gee, uh, I don't know what that means. So, yeah, you gotta. They gotta put some context there somehow. What does a million tokens get you? Well, it's, it's at like least a, on the music site. It's they like going to an arcade. Songs. Remember, you go to an arcade, you pay ten dollars for like fifty tokens. It's like, how much is a token? And then, of course, they just change the price the next day, and that's why they have the tokens. They just label all machines. <laughs> right. And it's like, oh, my ten dollars. You, you go home with ten dollars a token. You come back and you can spend two dollars, you know, worth worth of money later. Um, that's a racket. And by the way, um, arcade machines are flat out money launderers. That and laundromats. That's why it's called oh money God, laundering. Here we go. Anything that's, well, no, this is a practical discussion here. If you own a video arcade or if you own a video game, you're just having anonymous coins being put in your machine. You can't really, it's hard to track how many people put them in your machine. Yeah, you have a little counter and stuff like that, but you could just have some criminals go go cycle a whole bunch of money through your machine. You open up your machine, you pull out the coins, you can hand it back to them. I mean, you, <laughs> and it's there's all clean. no such thing as an an arcade anymore. I know. They, they, well, yeah, doesn't um, Dave and Buster's exist still? I don't think very many people go there anymore. It was fun when you went, but it was way expensive, and the pizza tasted like cardboard. Sports bar. Photos, Dave and Buster's. Oh, they're all about food now, aren't they? There's the video games. Oh, they probably have all those party video video games, like uh, party games like Ski Ball and all that shit. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the, the traditional arcades. Well, I'm sure there's video games in there. What's this? I, you know, I'll tell you what. That brings back a memory because I, when I was a kid, the video game consoles they had a. At the at the mall where I live, they had an arcade there, there. And it was we used to go on Friday nights and, and we'd go to the movie theater and right across from the movie theater inside the mall was the uh the arcade. And they had this cool the coolest game we ever played. And I would go with twenty bucks in my pocket and and I would buy my movie ticket and the rest of it went to the arcade. They got this game. Do you remember when Dragon's Lair came out? Yep, I'm very good at that game. And you had to memorize, but, you know, left tap twice, forward. And the timing. And his, yeah, and, and his sword would go. I, You know, back then, you know, money was went way farther, right? A hundred bucks, to, you know, then was worth like $7,000 today. I probably put $7,000 back then learning Dragon's Lair. It was a. It was the first cartoon. It was. It was actually like a cartoon on the video game console. It wasn't like Space Invaders. That was like super cool. Well, how about I pull it up here? Dragon's Lair images. Uh, let's look at YouTube. Pull up YouTube here. And uh, that was like the coolest thing ever that I had ever seen in my entire life. And you used to have to stand in line to play it. Okay, let's go to because YouTube. it was the. There we go. Hold on, stay put. I got a commercial. What the hell? Hold on. Don't you don't you use Brave? There's I no do. commercials on Brave. Yeah, there is. Okay. No, there's not. I want to put the Faz Radio logo up right here. Okay. So basically, this was one of the first Laserdisc games. Um, and you just go in, and you're not going to hear any sound, probably. And you're just no. using a joystick to just... Oh, I can hear me. I can hear sounds here. But yeah, you, you just move the, the, the joystick forward or to the left or to the right. And you'll see things flash. Like, okay, you just move to the right. Move to the right again. And uh, basically, you're just controlling the cartoon. If you get it wrong, then he'll just die. Um, and all it's doing is just picking different clips from the laser disc. So it's a neat idea, very simple kind of um, interface. It's it's not kind of what you thought it was, where you'd actually control and move around a character. You're just 
choosing clips. But right. That was, was that thing. was huge back then. Cause I mean, you remember space invaders and the, the crappy Minecraft looking thing of video games back then, when this came out, it was like blowing everybody away. Yeah. It, well, this was, this was neat because this was a creative use of like digital video. And I'm surprised. I thought there'd be a lot more games like this, but there are, there's, there's not, there's only like what three or four. They have dragon's lair. They have space ace. And maybe there's a couple others out there, but uh, th this guy's getting them all right. So, <laughs> well, yeah, he's doing the video. He doesn't want to die. This was hard. Oh, this yes, was super remember. hard with the timing. You had to get the timing just right. Otherwise, yeah, keeps one of the... those different scenes there and that that that's the thing is you have to get used to the timing of the scenes. And if it became if it was a new scene, you wouldn't get the timing. It was it was sometimes it would slow up, the slow down and speed up. Um, so in a, inevitably, if you got this far, you spent, you know, 50 bucks by this point. It's like <laughs> easily cents a play. You got three lives per per 50 cents. <laughs> right. Yeah, and yeah. You this was that was when fun. you're playing it. You cannot watch this thing either. You 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 you're just staring at like the, the little flashes. So it's it's other people enjoy watching you play a lot that more was, than you are. That was amazing. That you know, as these video games came out, um, you you learned really quickly, right? So I begged when I was I was ten, eleven, twelve years old. I begged for an Atari 2600 and my cousin had one and we were all always at my cousin's house. And so we would go over there and, and I'd get to play it. And for Christmas, like one year I finally got it. And I, I had blisters, you know, up in, in the crook from holding the joystick and man, part. hours and hours and hours on that thing. And the coolest graphics at the time was, uh, a, a console called Intellivision. And this is as far and, as I've gotten is this stupid ass level here, which how far are we? Yeah, that's there? pretty far in. Uh, about a that, quarter of the way through that the game. was That was really hard. You had to think quick and remember all the joystick pushes. So, yeah. You played your video games with your cousins. Uh, the, the Atari yeah. 2600 back well, in Stone Age. And then... Right. And then in television, you had like a little a little disc you pushed. There was no joystick and you had a number pad and you would slide these these each game had their own little little cellophane slide cards for the number pad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And, That's the and tricks. yeah, we would play we would play football. Of course, they had a football game on there and okay, so the pass. I remember the code. It was nine, five, one, eight. Enter was the the touchdown throw that I used to use all the time. And we had so much fun. And so the whole point of this story is I was so blown away by those graphics. Well, after that, after I got to be 15, 16, we started playing Commodore 64 games. So I got out of like the, the true video gaming because we were playing a lot of the, a lot of the fantasy adventure games. That's where I get into the builders and why builders are my favorite to this day. But I had gotten out of video gaming a lot at that point. And then, of course, when when uh, Tegan came around, we got uh, him a little game when he was probably three or four years old. And uh, April was was all excited because it was the coolest thing ever. And it was called a Wii. And oh. everybody, everybody, I, I was blown away by those graphics right on the Wii because I hadn't seen video games. You, you're years. switching to the Wii now. I'm trying to keep up with you. I know, right? So I thought those video game graphics were the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And everybody in the room is laughing at me. We had a bunch of friends over and they're like, yeah, you've been out of video gaming for a long time. These, these graphics are complete ass. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, wild? yeah, the, my kids were playing it last week. We okay. found the old Wii and they hooked it up to the TV. It was funny because some of the other ones, the, the new TVs don't have the old RGB inputs for some of those older platforms that we had. So they mm -hmm. were upset and they ended up digging out the Wii. 
and we were we were playing all the Wii games last weekend. So that was kind of a blast from the past and a heck of a lot of fun. I'm going back to the drag dragon's lair here. <laughs> Actually, I think I have been. I I think I did get this far. I do remember the horses. But now, if you notice, there's little left and right arrows here. Um, uh, the, but they're animate. They look like different animations. Um, this has been emulated in in uh, other games. So this looks like a PC version. But you're still just using the uh, the arrow keys. All right. So. Um, I think that's it for today. Um, like I said in the beginning, I was very blown away by AI music that you can generate, you can create your own lyrics for. Um, can't control the, the 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 actual chords in the music, but I'm sure that's only a matter of time. I mean, this is just the very beginning. I'll probably make some NFTs and put them in my NFTs. Um, and I bet, I bet you actually own the the rights to any song that's being made. Because uh, I know if you use ChatGPT, they actually say explicitly anything that's generated, you can make money off of, it's it's yours. So I bet the same is true with, with music. Well, it, it probably will be. There's other music platforms that we've talked about them on here. I did a demonstration of one when we were messing around with the Faz Radio Music at one point. Um, it's not as good as this one, but here's the thing. You just can't copyright anything that uh that that's used and generated by ai okay because so let's let's be clear about what that means if it's solely generated by ai i would think that that's i believe it's considered not not copyrightable you cannot copyright it however if you have a that's solely generated. However, if you have a stake in it, if it, if the AI is generating something that looks that's embellishing something that you're you've made, uh, at the very least, you have part of the copyright there. So it you're using it as a tool, kind of like Photoshop. So I don't know what the legal things are. I, the only legal part, the only legal idea in my observation that's been tested in court is the fact is if you if you have AI generating something for you without you well, making any put input whatsoever. We did a whole show on that and brought up that that case that was ruled on. Yeah, but that and case had it, to do with 100% generated AI, did not have to do with AI that was adding to something you were doing. Listen, but it did address that, and it's it's very ambiguous right now. And that was the argument that we got into because it there the terminology that's used right now and what we talked about on that show is the judge ruled that it was not substantially, you have to have a substantial amount, whatever that means. That's judgment call, right? Why they call him a judge. You have to have substantial input in order to copyright it. So you would have to basically prove that, I would guess, the majority of that was of your creation. Well, substantial doesn't mean majority. It means substantial. That's um, why I said I would guess, right? Because it there's which only is why, been... which is well, again, my my whole purpose, my whole desire for for AI is like Photoshop. It's to enhance something that I've done. It would really suck if I made something and AI completely transfigured it into something unrecognizable from what I did before. Um, I think though that if it started from a seed that you made it's still partially yours even if it is unrecognizable um the the important part to mention here is how much is created by the ai and how much is created by you so anyway let's let's leave that one that argument for later because we're over an hour <laughs> and i need to eat some dinner and you need to go to bed sir because it's like late p.m well, where you are well i still got i started. still got i got post post faz work to do before I go to bed because I want to get all this done today. Stress disorder. Yes, that is a thing. That's a thing. So, by the way, um, this uh, the the person that made this game or the animator, his name is Don Bluth, and he's uh, a Disney animator. He's done a lot of oh. Disney stuff. So this this might look very Disney. That's why I don't think he. I think he started his own company to make these. I don't think he was part of Disney when he made this. So um, he has a, a lot of Disney movies out there. So a lot of this stuff looks 
very much like what he does. God, this anyway. brings back memories. I remember all of this. Holy cow. All right. So I have <laughs> to find the little brand thing, and we'll use our, our, our regular sign-off this time. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>